Hey guys, my name is Boris and I'm a computer engineering student at the Technical University of Berlin. And on this channel, I want to talk about things that I've learned and might bring you value, general educational topics and lifestyle ones. Today, I want to start a little series where I explain a bit of the fundamental reinforcement learning theory, such as Bandit theory, which we'll focus on in this video. But also mark of decision processes and reinforcement learning techniques like value iteration, Q iteration, Q learning, and so on. Yeah, so let's get started with the important fundamental conceptual problem of the multi armed bandits. This problem setting is the prototype for the so called exploration exploitation problems. More precisely, for problems where sequential decisions influence both the state of knowledge of an agent, as well as the states or the rewards the agent gets. Therefore, there is some trade-off between choosing decisions for the sake of learning, which influences the state of knowledge in a positive way, versus for the sake of rewards, while clearly learning might also enable you to better collect rewards later. Bandits are a kind of minimalistic problem setting of this kind. And the methods and algorithms developed for bandits translates to other exploration exploitation kind of problems within reinforcement learning, machine learning and optimization. So what are those multi-armed bandits all about? The problem originates from those machines you find in casinos where you pull a trigger and with a certain probability receive a reward. Now imagine you have several of those machines next to each other and each one of those has different properties. This perhaps isn't really true for the ones in casinos, but let's keep going. What that means is that one machine perhaps has a higher probability of giving you a good reward, such as a lot of money. But you of course don't know which one is the best machine. Now, the important thing to understand is that on the one hand you win or lose, which affects your direct reward, but you also learn something about the properties. And this method is used in several applications like recommender systems. Imagine a shop has like 1000 items and it has to choose which one it should recommend to you. And by that it learns your preferences. Then there are, for example, clinical trials, where you can't test every drug version, so you have to optimally choose which drug version you should continue evaluating. Then there's also efficient optimization, and so on. Now, to get back to our bandits, let's quickly describe our situation a bit more formal. Let's first of all say we have n machines. Each machine i then returns a reward y with a certain probability. There are a few ways to write that down formally. For example, this one here. Now this theta i is just a constant parameter that defines the probability distribution for winning a prize, which is unknown to us. You can imagine this parameter as a setting in the machine that says machine A has a 30% probability of winning a prize or machine B has 40% and machine C has 50%. But again, the player, or formally said, the agent, doesn't know this parameter. Without this parameter, we can also just say this is the probability of machine i to win the prize y, and ignore this parameter. It isn't that important. It is just nice to know or to have seen it, because it is a relatively common notation in machine learning literature. So the last thing is, what do we optimize for? Well, the goal will be to maximize the reward, for example, collected in the first t trials. So let's start with an example and play a bit. Let's say you have played machine A and won, then machine B where you have lost, and then again A where you have lost again. What machine would you play next? I would say let's try a new one and play C. And great, we won. Now. Let's again play a new machine, machine D, and I lost. And now? Well, this one should be relatively obvious. We'll play C because we had a 100% success rate with C, and so on. Now, all of this what happened in our brain. We want to be able to build a model that can optimally do those decisions of exploiting the knowledge we have, but also exploring the machines and learn their properties. 
And this is a fundamental question that is also important for reinforcement learning. You want a model that efficiently allows to learn which decisions to take. Okay, let's continue with formalizing the problem that we want to solve and then get to the method called upper confidence bound, long for UCB. T here is always the current time step, which is discrete. So imagine a time axis where t is 1, then t is 2, and so on. At this time step t, we can make a decision, or in other terms, take an action, a t. In the multi-armed bandit case, this action is choosing one of the n machines. So a would be, in this case, between 1 and n, like the amount of machines that we have. And yt then is the reward we get at the time step t. Now you will probably have to focus a bit more. A strategy, or more commonly known as a policy pie, maps all the history, everything that we have learned before, to a new decision. This is on the most general level and can be implemented in different ways. But it literally only means that, based on what the agent has learned, it will predict the next action to take. So an agent chose an action at the time step 1 and then got a reward y1. After that he chose another action and got a reward and so on up to time step t minus 1. Because remember we currently are at time step t. The problem now is to find a good policy pi that will, for example, maximize the sum of all rewards. Or, for example, maximize the reward achieved in the final step. But this will always be very dependent on the use case. Choosing what to optimize for is very interesting and has effects on the policy. For example, the second goal to optimize for is optimizing for the final reward. This means the agent doesn't have to care about the intermediate rewards and can fully go into exploration and learn as much as possible. Whereas in the first case, he has to collect as many rewards as possible. Okay, so let's now get to the solution, or rather one possible solution. That is so simple that one could ask if it can really be the best one. Here you can see the algorithm for UCB1. We can ignore what the 1 stands for, but as mentioned UCB stands for upper confidence bound. For the notations, yi hat is the average reward of machine i. So as you know, you would simply calculate that by adding up all its rewards and dividing it through the number of times it was played by the agent. ni is exactly this number of times machine i was played and n is then the number of rounds so far, so the sum of all ni. And finally there is beta. And this is a parameter that can be tuned, but in most cases it is chosen to be about 0.99. Now, in terms of algorithm, you first have to play every machine once, so that you have at least the minimum knowledge of it. And you can see it would also lead to issues with the formula when dividing with zero. Now we select the next machine to play with the formula shown here. If we would, for example, only choose the machine with the highest average reward, we would be fully in an exploitative case and wouldn't really learn much about other machines. This second term here is the explorative term, which uses a little statistics magic and is used to reduce the entropy in the distribution, which more or less means it helps with playing other, less chosen machines, so that we have a better estimation if the currently best machine actually is the best one. Okay, let's round this video up with a little example exercise and see what UCB1 would choose for one time step. Let's say we have three bandits or machines. Bandit 1, 2 and 3. We have played bandit 1 six times and have gotten these rewards. Machine 2 was played two times and the rewards were the values 8 and 12. Lastly, Bandit 3 was also played two times and the rewards were 5 and then 13. Oh, and Beta is set to 1. Now, the question is which Bandit would UCB1 choose? So, we now have our little formula and we have to choose the Bandit with the highest value that it returns. You can pause the video and try for yourself first.
Okay, now let's plug in the values for each machine and let's start with bandit 1. The average return is 1 over 6 multiplied with the sum of all rewards. So it comes out to be 10. Then for the second term we plug in 10 for n, because there were 6 plus 2 plus 2 rounds played. And for ni we choose 6. Now let the calculator do its work and we get about 10.876. If we do the same for the other two bandits, we get the following values. And this means bandit 2 has the highest UCB score with 11.517. And the algorithm would now play bandit 2. Now let's ask another question for the perhaps a bit more advanced people. Let's assume this is the last chance to pull a bandit. Your final time step, large T. Pause the video and think about it for a bit. As hints, Think about exploration and exploitation, considering it's the last play you can do. And then think about entropy. So, for the solution, you should actually play machine 1. Because in the last play, there is no reason to explore anything. You should completely base your decision on what you have already learned. This means you only evaluate the exploitative term, which is 10 for both bandits 1 and 2. But Bandit 1 was played more often, meaning its entropy is lower, or in other words, the value is more expressive or more likely to be correct. Okay, you have made it through this video. I hope it was somewhat digestible and understandable. This concept is a very fundamental and important one, and something that you'll probably have to understand for your AI or machine learning course. And I hope I could help with that. And if so, please feel free to like this video and consider subscribing to my channel. As mentioned, I will probably make a few more videos on reinforcement learning topics or like theory, and I will group them in a um, playlist that I will link up here and you can watch the rest of the videos. And with that said, as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!